A while ago I published a game to the App Store made using Swift Playgrounds. I then made a video, which I'll link to below if you're curious, about how to take that Swift Playgrounds project and turn it into an Xcode project. The reason why you might want to do that is because Swift Playgrounds has limitations around adding certain capabilities like Game Center or in-app purchases to your application or game or whatever. So in this video I'm going to update that game and bring some of those capabilities to it. It's going to be simple and I'm going to be learning as I go, but I thought I'd share the process with all of you. In order to add Game Center or in-app purchases to your game, you are going to need to use Apple's portal appstoreconnect.apple.com to set these things up. Once you have them set up on the portal, you use Xcode to connect it all together. I've already set up a leaderboard and I've set up an in-app purchase on my portal and I'm going to walk you through how I connected them. I've already written the code. I don't want to sit here and type away for an hour on end. So this is working. That's the good news. Now let's take a look at what I did. I created a new file, GameKit Helper, and this was something that I found mainly through Apple's documentation itself. Um, basically what you do is create a singleton for this, and then you fill out the uh, various things here. Uh, it's mostly boilerplate code. Uh, you can authenticate the player. If they are not, then you're just going to return uh, that it was not possible to authenticate them. Pretty uh, straightforward stuff. You can find um, the code on Apple's documentation. I found very helpful. Stack Overflow as well was very helpful here. Uh, once you have this this uh, class set up, you can then you can easily just add it to um, your game view controller. So uh, you use the helper delegate um, to conform to the view controller, and then you create uh, the game kit helper singleton. And then inside here, you set it to that. Basically, set the delegate to itself. You're going to authenticate the player through this process. And then this part here is if you want to set up uh, the access point, which is an iOS 14 or newer thing. I find it very helpful to being able to access Game Center from within your game. It creates a little uh, icon for people to click through and they can get to the Game Center interface uh, pretty easily. So then from here, what we need to do is come over to Game Scene and then we can form our Game Scene to this controller delegate. It's going to require this function here, which will allow you to basically dismiss the game center view controller when you're done. And then you have to create your variables for your leaderboard IDs. The leaderboards that I've created are leaderboard one, which handles high scores and player experience points, leaders, or whatever. This is something I've been playing around with to give players a reason to keep playing the game beyond just getting a high score, right? If you play the game a lot and you do certain things, you earn experience points, maybe you could be at the higher end of that. I've been thinking of doing like, you know, seasons or whatever, right? Anyway, that's beyond the point of this video. I have two leaderboards. So then inside of my update function, when I end the game, which it ends when the timer hits zero. So if the timer gets to zero, the game ends. At this point is when I need to basically report the player's experience and the player's high score to the leaderboard. So what I do is I get that value um, by adding, so basically current player experience gets uh, changed by how much experience the player earned in the game, and then we set the user defaults so that it can be stored locally on the device um, and then we're going to report that current player experience to the Game Center leaderboard. If it is the highest value that player is reported, because that's how the leaderboard is set up, it will be overwritten on the leaderboard or displayed on the leaderboard. Same thing here happens, except in this case, I only do this if player points are greater than the current high score, which I've gotten up at the top of the code there. And then we set the high score equal to player points. And then we use user defaults to set our high score for the key high score so that we can have it locally on the device. And finally, we report that player points to the leaderboard using the submit score um, function here. We're going to use the 
points leaderboard ID and you know handle the errors if there are any. Setting up game center leaderboards is easy-ish. You need to have a little bit of patience. It does require juggling between the App Store Connect and Xcode and making sure everything is all set up properly. It's very important to remember what you are calling these things inside of App Store Connect because that's how you're going to reference them in code. But once you have the workflow down, it's pretty easy to just make it make it work and keep adding to it. All right, the next thing that we need to do is create an in-app purchase. Again, we're gonna do that inside of App Store Connect and we're going to set it up. So the in-app purchase for this game that I wanted to add was just a simple tip the dev button. Um, nothing fancy. I don't wanna have any consumables or any subscriptions or anything like that. I just wanna be able to see if I can add an in-app purchase and accept payments. So it's a pretty small scope and makes it really easy to kind of test out this theory. What I needed to do first was, again, create my in-app purchase inside of App Store Connect. Once I've set that up, a new file, um, and it's called store kit configuration file. And then you go through the process of giving it a name and you can sync it with your App Store Connect. And if you do that, it will pull any products you have on App Store Connect that are a waiting approval or even approved, it'll pull them into your Xcode project. And then you'll be able to see, you know, what the name is, price, and so on and so forth. This is all read only. It's synced from App Store Connect. You could also go the other way and create this file from scratch and then build all of these products locally inside of Xcode, but it's not synced to App Store Connect. That's kind of the trade-off. Um, that's more for testing, I think. So anyway, once you have your product set up, it's pretty simple to get it up and running. It's just, you know, it, it took a little bit of time for me to figure out all of the little details that needed to happen. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is import the framework store kit. This allows us to have access to all of the APIs that Apple will require. Uh, we need to conform our class that is going to handle these to the uh, products request delegate and the SK payment transaction server. These two things allow us to get the products from Apple and display them to our users, as well as observe the transaction as it occurs so that we can make sure that it has succeeded and then unlock the product appropriately. Then um, we need to create a button for the user to press in order to create that purchase. Um, in this app, I've created a tip the dev button. It's just a simple sprite node uh, with a label. And then we have a product, which is a optional SK product. And we have a product ID, which is an optional string. Now, I only have one product, so it's going to, it might look different for your application, but for me, it's very simple. The first thing I need to do when I move to this view is fetch the products. This populates all the products I have, which is just one, but it allows me to have them available if the player chooses to purchase. And then when they come down to the button and they press uh, tip the dev uh, button, we're going to guard against that the product that we have is the product or we're gonna return and then if our payments can be made, so if the user can actually make payments, then we're gonna create a payment of type SK payment for the product. And then we're going to start the SK payment queue, add it to the self, and then add the transaction or the payment to that payment queue. Now, what happens? How does this all work? Well, there's three functions that are required to make this happen. You already saw the the call of fetch products. This again makes a request. It uses the SK product requests and it's going to use your product identifiers. These are what's set up in App Store Connect. 
Mine is just hard coded in because I just have one. If you have a bunch of these things, there's there's better ways to do this. But for me, I'm just hard coding this in as copy one. Now make sure that you're using whatever exact characters you use to set that product up in App Store Connect here because it's important uh, that it knows which product to use and it's a string. So you have to make sure that you're typing these things correctly. Um, once you do that, you're going to let the request, you're going to set the delegate to itself, and you're going to start the request. That's going to pull the products in so that you can have the products available. Now, when you have a product request, this is going to create uh, the product. It's going to get a response of products, and you're going to take the first one. You're going to set the product equal to the product that you get. This is just prints for debugging. But so this product here is the one that we set up at the top, right? An SK product. And the, that is set to the first product that we get from this request. Hope this all makes sense. Uh, finally, we have our payment queue. And this is uh, going to handle all the transactions that are occurring. So we have a transaction in a possible array of transactions. We're going to switch on the transaction that we're interested in. We're going to switch on that transaction state. It can be either purchasing, which we're not going to do anything while a purchase is happening. It can be purchased or restored. In this case, I'm just doing the same thing. I'm going to finish the transaction and unlock it, basically. There's nothing for me to unlock here because it is literally just a tip the dev. So all you're doing is giving me money and I am giving you nothing in return. Thank you. Um, but if you were unlocking something, this would be the place where you might want to unlock that thing. If your transaction fails or is deferred, you may want to handle these differently. Right now, I'm just printing out the transaction has failed to the console. I probably should go through and create an alert to allow the user that is wondering why the transaction didn't work, uh, why it failed. But that's something I need to look into doing um, further. Right now it's set up, I've tested it, it's working in a sandbox mode. So I'm happy with the progress I've made so far. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.